Hey y'all, welcome back to the latest Team Local Fit Roundtable. No idea what number this is, but today we are talking all about peak week. So myself, Lauren, I guess, okay. Um, there we go, introducing myself in third person. Are you joined by, <laughs> this is off to a rough start. Ryan, our training director. <laughs> Lauren, I wish you could see Lauren's face right now if you're not watching the YouTube part. <laughs> She's so concerned. I have like secondhand <laughs> embarrassment. <laughs> Um, and then I'm joined by my other amazing coaches, Jillian, Karina, and Lauren, although they're not so amazing making fun of me right now. So <laughs> anyways, we're going to dive right into it. So peak week. Now this is, we're talking about peak week in the context of physique athletes. Um, we actually could probably do like a one for power athletes too, babe. That might be interesting if people kind of want to hear about that, because it's obviously very different. Um, but this, we're going to be talking all about peaking for a physique competition. Now, Team Logo Fit mostly deals with bikini and figure competitors. Um, so if anybody isn't familiar with bodybuilding, there are many different categories. So for females, um, women's bodybuilding would be the biggest, and then it goes women's physique, and then figure, and then bikini. Um, the new division wellness is kind of somewhere sandwiched in the middle between figure and bikini. Um, and then for men, there is uh, bodybuilding, classic physique, and then men's physique. So every division is going to be different in the fact of like what you need to peak for as far as like leanness required and fullness required. So bikini is going to traditionally be looked at as the least amount of worrying the least about peaking, but I would argue that at kind of the competitive levels, it's just as important, right? Because especially for NPC um, national level bikini competitions, as well as um, IFBB competitions, it's like the, the girls are very lean and muscular, of course, not the same density as figure and beyond, um, but the peaking is still important. So no matter what division or what organization you're in, you should still try and have a good peak week. So first and foremost, I'll say, if you don't know what to do, um, just don't do anything at all because a bad peak is way worse than no peak. <laughs> I'll just say that. Um, because if you just, if you just kind of walk in, it's probably going to be a lot better than if you try to change too many variables. Um, particularly if you really try and cut some things out. Um, but then really the whole point of peak week is to reduce inflammation, increase muscle glycogen and really keep like a tight look. So you don't want to have a ton of just water where it shouldn't be. Right. So a lot of the old traditional peaks because of that, people used to do like, Oh, we'll cut carbs. We'll cut water. We'll cut sodium and we'll load potassium and we'll use diuretics. And for most people that does not look good. <laughs> like I would say nine out of 10 times, you're not looking too hot when you've cut all those things, especially if you're a natural athlete. Um, if you are enhanced, it's going to be a little bit different with how much water you have, but it really isn't going to be something that we want to like mess with that much. Um, and certain things, especially like cutting water and cutting sodium will make you look a hundred times worse. So do not do that. Um, but so in general, things that we're going to control that we can all kind of talk about differently here are going to be um, training, cardio, sodium, carbs, well, all macros, but specifically carbs, um, and water. So those are really going to be the things that we're looking at as coaches to manipulate. Um, and everybody's going to be a little bit different. So everybody knows kind of, oh, you want to carb up for a show, but when do you carb up? How much? And again, there's so much information on this. We could talk about for five hours, <laughs> but just kind of wanted to go over with you guys just some of the ways that you've peaked for yourselves and maybe some client situations we could talk about. So Lauren, you had your hand up. I don't know if I should call on you cause you're making fun of me, but <laughs> so there we go. Um, okay, so before we even get into any of that, I just wanted to say that if you're not ready before peak week, peak week is not going to magically make you ready. Like, I think some people think, like, I know I've still got a little way to go and I'm two weeks out, but I got peak week coming up and it's just going to shred me. Like, that is not the case. That is not the time to try to do some fancy shit. Have you um, seen that meme where it's like, it's like, I think it's Job of the Hut or it's something like that. And it's like, oh, a peak week, I'm just going to dry out, bro. And it's like... No, no, no. <laughs> I haven't seen that, but like that sounds very uh, familiar from some people. And so, yes, I just wanted to put, point that out there. Like nothing that we do for peak week is extravagant. It's all a way to just kind of get the finish, finishing touches, make you look as sharp and full as possible. It's not to, it's not necessarily meant to be a time to correct something. If you're not ready, you're not ready. There's other shows. Um, but that is not the week to try to like, get ready essentially. So, and it can go yeah. really bad before it goes better. Correct. Yes. And I think, um, so something that we have tried to do, at least for me, um, Lauren and I have before 
peak week, tried out. How do you look after a refeed? How do you look two days after a refeed? That way we kind of have an idea going into peak week. Should I have the refeed the day before the show? Should I have the, the refeed two days before the show? Or what should the carb load in my case uh, look like for me? So we'll usually take pictures about a week or two out with some different approaches and see what, what looks best and then utilize that for the peak week. So for me personally, I'm somebody that has typically gone for more of not like an extreme backload, but we start with lower carbs at the beginning of the week and then slowly start to increase. And then a, a lot of people can do that, but the amount of carbs that you get, that's what's all going to be different. And then trying to taper um, the sodium with the carb increase and things like that, it's all going to look very different for people. But yeah, we are not ones to cut out water. Um, we will likely increase your sodium. So I think a lot of people probably see our plan to start and they get kind of nervous because it's so against what has been thrown out there, which I think now it's becoming a little more accepted. Like you see people drinking sips of water back backstage now, whereas I feel like I didn't see that four years ago. So things are coming yeah. around, I think. Yeah. I remember when I was a, uh, a young gym bro, I guess, um, I had someone <laughs> come up to me and they were asking about like my peak week pro protocol. And, you know, I mentioned, you know, that we don't cut water, we don't cut sodium. And they were like baffled. Like, what do you mean? You're supposed to be suffering during peak week. Like everyone dies during peak week because, you know, <laughs> it was like the thing to just cut water, you take diuretics and all that. Um, and it doesn't have to, you don't have to be like, you know, uh, miserable in peak week. It's more about uh, lowering your stress and kind of just cruising on into the show uh, in a way that's best for your physique at the time. Um, and one other thing that I want to point out is that peak week is not the week to try some new food. Um, like, oh, like I picked up this new vegetable, I'm gonna try it out. Um, <laughs> you do not wanna do it, any of that. Um, if anything, you wanna cut out like anything that is known to bloat you, anything that's known to throw your digestion off. You want peak week to be really simple, um, and safe foods that you know that you can eat because if you eat something that suddenly bloats you or throws your digestion off like three days out from a show, not what you want. Um, yeah, so play it safe. Yeah, yeah, definitely play it safe with the food. Not add <laughs> new foods, but also not change kind of your um, oh, yeah. timing or like how, basically just like how you do shit. You know what I mean? Like if, if all if all prep you've been doing something one way and then all of a sudden you just start doing weird shit the week of peak week like why would you do that um and I even have clients who are pretty you know advanced people who like are just like oh well I like after the fact like well I did this on Friday would that have affected me yeah why did you do this <laughs> like why would you why would you have tried that or done that or totally changed this up so um you know is it going to make or break you completely no but it's just something that it's like, okay, we should probably be trying not to do that. And if you've been eating on yeah. a same meal timing split, let's keep that roughly. Yeah. You know, let's keep foods in or take foods out that, you know, like during prep, you want to usually feel bloated because you're so hungry, right? Mm -hmm. um, peak week, no, not a good idea. Like you're going to be hungry. You've been hungry for six months. It's going to be okay. So like, yeah. let's not have a bloated vegetable belly <laughs> going into yeah. the show not a good plan. Karina, what did you want to say? <laughs> yeah, well, um, I'll go what, to what I was going to say, but to hop on what you just said. So I just got done peaking very recently. And yeah, you don't want to bloat yourself. Lauren, on my depletion days, like limited how many veggies I could have because at the end of prep, I was like, all the veggies, just eat to feel bloated <laughs> just to like survive the next day. So that was a little bit like mentally tough at first, but it was survivable. But yeah, so you definitely don't want to like try to over bloat yourself peak week and uh, kind of limit all the things you do, like all of these sparkling waters you kind of drink to make yourself feel like as full as possible. But I also thought it'd be fun to share um, my first peak week experience because it was like not as nice as y'all's. Um, I was 98 <laughs> pounds, um, cut out all carbs as much sodium as possible the week leading up to the show and took diuretics. So like that week leading up to the show, I was yes. waking up <laughs> waking up out of bed and like passing out, like almost fainting every morning. Um, and then the way they did it was just like, a, I think it was 
kind of like a rapid backload. So I basically just like binged all night before the show. Like we went to IHOP and then I just ate like a ton of chocolate till I was sick. And I was like, great, <laughs> this is going to feel so awesome tomorrow. But um, so yeah, I did not have the luxury of having a great coach <laughs> starting out. Um, but this previous week that we just did, obviously was a hundred times better. Um, I am someone who I, I didn't come in super lean and super hard. So we did have to kind of pay attention to how many days post refeed um, I look my best because I'm not someone who loses weight after refeed. I typically will jump up and that's okay because not everyone's the same. And it typically takes maybe one, two, three days after for the whoosh effect um, and the reduced stress and the reduced stress to kind of take place for you to look your best. Um, but yeah, the key really to finding out what is the best peaking protocol for you or your clients is to really pay attention to how they look, how they respond, um, and their weight um, throughout refeeds or during refeeds throughout prep or even doing like a mock prep if you are ready enough, not everyone is ready enough to have that luxury of doing a mock, a mock peak week um, before the actual peak week. But yeah, you guys did a good job. So I don't have anything crazy to add except for my horror story. <laughs> <clears throat> no, literally like that is the very typical, like, and again, we're seeing way less of it, but I had a friend um, who, when I was in college, she was like really the only person I knew who like did competitions and she had a like, you know, coach who didn't really know what they were doing kind of a thing. And she was just like, you know, eat zucchini all day and that kind of stuff. And then literally like not eating, um, basically passing out. And then the night before the show and then the morning of, we like went out to eat and I was like, what are you like this? This does not make sense to me. Um, and like that, I call that like shit loading when people basically like eat, you know, like ultra, ultra clean, they eat like three foods all prep. And then all of a sudden they're like, go to Outback, have this, have this dessert. Like your body's like, what the, f so I was sick all night and I don't know yeah. how I got on stage and like, didn't pass out. But. Now, there's some people who are like who digest food like pretty quick and kind of whatever so they can like you see these people eating this crazy stuff before stage and they like they look great and you're like how'd they do that well some people just metabolize food differently right and then everybody has different kind of thresholds for stuff but yeah it's something that I'm not trying to like trial with so I'd rather somebody eat something that's controllable like rice and steak versus you know going out and eating some crazy things so I kind of want to hit a few of the different um little nodule like categories that we'll normally like touch on. So training, right? Like what are some things during peak week that we've kind of like developed for training? Um, before I touch on that, I just wanted to add to what Karina was talking about with like the shitty um, prep or the shitty peak. So when you start cutting out uh, electrolytes with sodium and potassium and cutting out fluids, you can potentially put yourself in a hazardous condition where you can cause cardiac dysrhythmias. Um, and you can also cause permanent kidney damage if you're doing diuretics and stuff like that. So something to like take into consideration if you're going to do those things. Um, you have to, have to, have to know what you're doing. And you can be listening to some idiot or just trying to wing it yourself. Um, the stuff is really serious and it's not something to play with. So I would always consider doing the safer route, which is the conservative route, which is what the girls preach. Um, but for training stuff, basically, um, hopefully, so by that time you're about ready to get on stage. Hopefully we have some exercises that are like um, ace cards for you. So like things that we are going to be using that like you find really beneficial. So like they're going to fill in the gaps in your physique and they're going to work very well for you and hit the areas that we're trying to target. Um, if any of those lifts are barbell compound type lifts, um, we'll probably replace those with like cables or dumbbells or body weight or something that's like just uh, less total stress on the organism. Um, so that's going to be the biggest change. I'm not going to change a whole lot of exercises because of similar reasons for like how you guys eat a lot of similar food um, leading into the peak week. You don't want to throw a bunch of new stimulus or in, um, into the equation. So we're going to pretty much maintain the exercises that you've been doing the previous block and then just make minor tweaks to them to where you're not introducing a whole uh, new stressor. And then that can cause a stress response and adaptations. And you might have uh, more delayed onset muscle soreness than, than you typically would. Uh, that's typically what happens when you change exercises and do a new training block. So the peak is really just a continuation of whatever you're currently doing um, with a little bit less loading. Like if the weights were, if like five to 10 rep range, we're probably going to bump that up a little bit. Um, 
So it stays pretty simple, but you're just going to try and uh, get a really good pump every single day and feel like you worked actually worked out and like you're going to leave the gym feeling full. So pretty much our goal. Yeah, we um, we support training during peak week, um, particularly because for a lot of girls we're adding more carbs later in the week, right? So some people cut training out completely um, in order to rest the body part, which I understand to a point, but we are decreasing it. Um, like as far as like the last, like Friday, you're not doing like balls to the wall kind of workout. And really that whole week is a lower RP and there aren't these compound lifts because you don't want to be doing something like that. But you also still want to be training. Like you don't want to just be doing absolutely nothing. Um, so I think that's really important. That the distinction that I found and especially like, cause there's been times where like on the day before the show, I train, sometimes I don't train. And I always feel better when I do like a quick, pretty much we have like a 45 minute circuit in there. Like it's not like anything mm-hmm. crazy, but it's like, you're getting in there, you're getting blood moving, you're getting a pump. Um, that way you're actually pushing the carbs like where they need to be, which is also an important thing to talk about. Um, so I'll kind of hit everybody and, and ask different stuff. So Jill, um, just touch a little bit on water, kind of like what we would do or what we wouldn't do, I guess. Well, we normally have like a pre peak week tracker. So that's where you're going to record your water intake, your average water intake every day, along with sodium, which we could touch on again. Um, So ideally we would keep that water intake the same if, you know, if it needs to be raised a little bit, maybe. Um, I know with my peak week last year, we ended up bumping water up a tiny bit, um, Mm -hmm. but we pretty much kept it consistent throughout the week uh, as well as sodium. Um, And then on show day, we have, you know, about 16 ounces of water with those first couple of meals. And then as you get closer to stage, you sip on it if you really need it. But um, yeah, if you really need it, or if you're thirsty, you drink a little bit. And then same thing for the meals after, um, before uh, what's it called finals. So you're not, you know, dying of thirst on show day as well. Yeah. You, you need water in order to get a pump actually. And yeah. Uh, oh. oops and uh, transport uh, everything. So if you're dehydrated, not a good idea. Water is so crucial. And some people like think that they need more food, but actually they just need more water and salt. You know what I mean? So you can do a lot with just managing fluid intake. So yeah, week of the show, it's usually pretty consistent as far as like somebody's average um, or, you know, somebody's having an issue going to the bathroom. It's like, Hey, let's up it a little bit or or kind of whatever. But usually most people at the end of their peak are drinking a decent amount of water just because they're hungry. (laughs) Um, So they're just drinking more water at the end of prep. So usually I kind of do around the average just kind of depends on what somebody is, has reported. Um, and then as far as sodium, so like you guys know, because you've peaked people and then I've peaked all of you. So sodium is really variable. Um, like, okay, not really variable. Like it, it's like a minor <laughs> deviation, right? Um, but typically when we do these kind of lower days earlier in the week, we'll kind of bring it up. And then um, a lot of times I'll just bring it down a little bit. But then sometimes, because sometimes when people have more carbs and then the, the salt comes down, they just respond a little better. But some people get way too like just they lose everything. So you need to bump sodium back up. So that's going to be kind of the one of the more variable options as far as there's no set thing. And when in doubt, just keep sodium the same. I'd rather people, I'd rather people keep it the same rather than try and make these fluctuations unless you have a coach who's checking in every day or every other day with you where you can make these manipulations. So that one, when in doubt, keep it consistent. Same with water. Like show day has water. Peak week has water. Same thing. Salt, show day, as well as um, peak week. Yeah, Lauren. I was just going to say quickly too, another reason that it's so important to have all three of those things, water, sodium, and carbs is because these are all, especially with the sodium, it's going to contribute to like nerve function and muscular contraction and things like that. And what are you doing on stage? You're posing. Yeah. So, and I know that it sounds, it might sound kind of ridiculous, but it, especially with the training kind of tapering that off too, it's like you are in such a depleted state by the end that if you go in with like tight hamstrings or like a tight lower back or something and you're a bikini girl, like good luck with your poses, you know? So we want to try to um, just make, we're trying to just optimize everything for that one day. And that's what people need to realize. All of this is literally for that one, Mm -hmm. however long you're on stage, that is it. And, and I think one good thing to point out as well is the best way to fuck up your peak week is to stress the small stuff. Don't. You have done so much work. You, most people have probably prepped five to six months. This is the final week. Just do your best. Think of it as any other week and get it done. It's not a time to be like, I was off with my sodium by three milligrams. Like, is that going to be okay? <laughs> yeah. and it, you're going to be fine. That's and way worse. Fine. Yes, exactly. The, what you stressing over three milligrams of salt 
is going to do way worse to your body than not having that that salt. That's really hard to count three milligrams of sodium too. Yeah. yeah. So like, like props to you if you're doing that. You got like one of those drug <laughs> baby scales if you got that going on. Um, like a I drug scale. About, I did want to talk about three carbs. Milligrams was dramatic. I get it. I did want to talk about carbs with Lauren and Karina because you both kind of respond a little bit differently. Um, yeah. So like with Lauren, typically we'll be able to bring carbs up similar with me, um, mm -hmm. you know, kind of bring carbs up into the show. And then some people who have a little bit, you know, some little more carb sensitivities like Karina um, does better with kind of more of like a mid load, right? I kind of steered away from front loads just because I found that they were way too variable and I didn't like them. So most people were either kind of doing this mid load or were doing a back load. Um, so, you know, just kind of, I want you guys to touch on that a little bit for your own experiences. Yeah. So for me, I think we started when I, when I think back, I mean, we obviously had to do some things that were aggressive, like not normal everyday things, but it probably wasn't the most aggressive thing you've seen. So like for me, I think I had deplete depletion days around like 50 grams of carbs from vegetables. And then I went up to about um, I think my day before the show, before pre-judging was 175 grams of carbs. And then my day before finals was 200 grams of carbs. And then I'm also typically somebody that's eating candy before I go on stage as well. So that will also be something that's different. Like what you're doing um, on the day of right before stage will be different for everybody depending on. And I remember being backstage with Jill at our last show and a couple of the other girls and Lauren was giving everybody you know, like a different protocol for right beforehand. So it's just, yeah. it's very much about knowing your client's body. So Lauren has to be aware of, you know, how we've been responding this whole prep and what is the best call. Yeah. So for me, um, water stayed the same sodium started high and then, I mean, tapered by maybe 300 milligrams a day, nothing drastic. And then carbs were going up to about 175, 200. Man, I think to that show, like it was five of you guys who had like complete, all completely yeah, different physiques. We all like, doing different shit back there. I remember like I was, I was running like, to stage. Jesus Christ. I remember I was running to stage for finals and you texted me and you were like, just take like a little bit of honey to the mouth and that's it. I'm like, <laughs> okay. And that's it. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> I mean. I was like. <laughs> so I'm not, and then that, so that's like, so like I have to typically, I can eat into the show, right? And then somebody like Karina, so like we loaded kind of midweek and then we tapered off and we still ate, of course, on show day more yeah. than you'd been eating, <laughs> um, which was felt amazing. Um, Karina's like, I have so much energy. I was um, not eating, yeah, yeah. <laughs> beforehand, I was just, I just feel like I haven't eaten in like five months. <laughs> um, After I'm just like, I'm you, Yeah, like we're you know, we were a little bit more conservative the day before the show. Um, so your biggest day was Thursday, right? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. because we typically, we did kind of the week before, trial. we kind of did like a trial run on how many days after the refeed, I looked my best. So I sent Lauren pictures every single day for like three days after my refeed. And we decided that like day two, I was like on point. I also hit a new low on day two. So we we're like, okay, that's going to be our plan going into the show. So yeah, um, I am vastly different than blonde Lauren. Um, I think I was <laughs> eating total 60 grams of carbs. Um, and then we walked up my highest, I think was 150. And then the day before, two days before show day, I was back at 100, still being, being very conservative even the day of mm -hmm. um, the show because yeah. I was someone who wasn't like crazy shredded and crazy lean. I was definitely more of a softer look. And when you are kind of softer, you don't really need to do a whole lot to fill out because I'm- And you're denser. Cool. Yeah. I so have, you already yeah. have density, whereas yeah. some people who don't have density really need to fill out hard to try and get as much as they can because yeah. otherwise they just look flat. So that's where the nuances like really come in with peaking and there's so many different things, but there's two other things I just wanted to touch on. So yeah, sodium, water, carbs, and you know, training are kind of the, the big things that we're controlling here. Um, and fluids as well. So that's like the five, the big five, <laughs> not personality test, the big five. <laughs> things i'm such a loser anyways um so two things so one uh we will see some clients lose weight on peak week um mm -hmm. and here's what happens so i always call peak week an inflated low so what's happening is you are tapering things so perfectly to look your absolute best on saturday 
and particularly training and cardio are tapering down a ton. Oh, we didn't talk about cardio, but basically, you know, cardio will be higher in the week and then that tapers off as well. So, um, both with training and cardio, you're going to be a little bit harder kind of earlier and then it's tapering off. Um, so when you're seeing a taper in both of those, you're likely going to see a reduction just in, in fluid and inflammation, which is why you're likely going to see a scale drop. Um, now if somebody drops an enormous amount of weight and they're like, I can't stop peeing, I can't this, whatever they're getting really flat. So we need to add more food. So I am looking to see how much weight somebody loses, but if it's just a little bit and they're kind of like, Oh my God, peak week magic. I lost a bunch of weight. I didn't work out and I did no cardio and I ate more. How's this happening? It's because it's just an inflated low. So even when people think about their stage weight, I don't even like people thinking about that because it, it can be so different. So I like to say, Hey, what were you weighing before peak week? That's, that's our like stage weight look that we're trying to get after. Um, cause if I compare myself, I mean, I, I fluctuated last season, like about four pounds to the first show to the last one, like as far as my peaks go. And I mean, so that's like super, like the number at the very bottom was not a realistic number. It was just like a very inflated low from the peak week. And then second, just to kind of wrap this up, um, and something that Rye told me like forever ago and just always kind of reminds me and I try and remind my clients is that the goal of peak week is to look your absolute best on Saturday. Doesn't matter what you look like on Tuesday, Wednesday, not even Friday. Um, obviously we're using that as clues, um, because we can't just be like, Nope, doesn't matter because of course we are making changes during your peak week. But if things look slightly off and you don't feel your absolute best, that is okay because the best is for Saturday. And then guess what? Sometimes peak weeks get messed up. That just happens. You know what I mean? So we can learn from the last peak to then correct it for the future one. So just keep that in mind, you guys, when you are peaking, you know, if it's Monday and you're not like, Oh my God, I don't look perfect you're not supposed to like, especially if you've depleted over the weekend, you've had a pretty low. And the reason that we just pretty much bring stuff down is just, if you deplete, you can kind of super compensate a little bit better. So typically people who can't handle a lot of carbs, they deplete a little bit and then we add some more in, they're able to add more than they were previously. So that's the only reason that we do the depletion, nothing fancy. Um, it's just like a slight super compensation effect. So again, everything is like this much. So when we're talking about it, it might be like a 2% difference, but that could matter at a really competitive show. So that's all about peak week. Well, not everything, but those are some things about a peak week. And really, you know, you want to manage these variables and you want to have somebody who like is, is really looking this over, you know, checking in multiple times per peak week, sometimes even daily if, if necessary. Um, and that's really, really important for people to understand if you're undertaking all of these different changes. But when in doubt, if you are not being coached by somebody and it's your first show and you're nervous and you don't want to do this, don't change anything. Literally just walk in. That's going to be better than trying to do some crazy stuff that you're not, um, you know, a, a good peak. Uh, there was a podcast with Cliff, um, my coach, who's like known for peaking and um, Eric Helms. And they basically were like, I don't remember the percentages, but I'm just going to make them up because it was kind of like this. Um, if you do like a good peak, you know, you might get five, 10% better. If you do a bad peak, you're going to get like 30% worse. You know what I mean? Like it's going to be like dramatically worse. So the exact percentages, by the way. I just really? On. Yeah. <laughs> you nailed it. Man, I don't got a good memory, but I know some <laughs> stupid shit like that. Um, all right. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, we appreciate it. Um, make sure you leave us a 10 star review. You basically, we should get shirts to say 10 star review. Like, oh my God. Yes. That was, oh, <laughs> was I like, there was like a sloth him. with like 10 fingers. <laughs> he has like his little fingers and then we just like add them yes. yeah just like add some more onto it <laughs> Joel, make it happen um ryan is so un unamused um <laughs> but yeah 10 star review subscribe like comment do the whole deal let us know if you have any other questions um and we'll catch you next week bye